Welcome to episode five of my weekly painting blog. Today is the second part of finishing up the tractor. So we're gonna see the time-lapse footage from this past week. I did uh, injure my one of my fingers, my left hand, thank God. And uh, so there was some delays, but we got it finished and I'm thankful. I wanna dedicate this episode to my mother whose birthday would have been today. She's in heaven and we miss her. My brother and my sisters and my nieces and her grandchildren, we all miss her greatly. She was a very wonderful woman. She was small, but she was strong. She grew up in a farm in North Dakota. She, I think she would like the tractor painting dedicated to her. And uh, the last time I spoke to her was actually on her birthday. I was painting a painting of her from a photograph, her senior photograph, her high school senior photograph, which hung in our home all of the years that I can remember. My sister, who took such wonderful care and was a, is a technical person, thank God, uh, set us up so she could watch me paint over Zoom or FaceTime. And, uh, and ha we had a nice conversation. She was very complimentary as she watched me paint. And I'll always cherish that. Thank you so much, Andy. She, I also needed to know about the dress because the photograph is black and white. And uh, she said it was, I wanted to know what color it was. And she said it was maroon and brown and that dad called it her dressy dress, which we learned that day, which is special, very special. Anyway, on this very special day, I dedicate this episode to her. So let's get on with it. Here begins the second week painting on this vintage tractor. I love to use the palette knife on the sky. I love the way it looks and feels, the angular. Then I go to the brush, to get a softer effect. I don't want to have a sharp, sharp distinction between the sky and the hillsides. Although it is a very, I'm trying to reduce the chroma of the blue. It was a very high midday, full sun moment. It's a constant push and pull to get the sky in. You want the topography of the mountain to be correct. And so when I go back to put the mountains back in correctly, I will do the same thing of feathering a light soft edge so that it does not make a harsh line there. Next I'm working on the vocal point, the area that is the point of interest, which, which to me is the shadow patterns and the area underneath the front part of this tractor. This is fascinating. I'm, I'm trying to consciously keep the other areas less detailed using soft edges. And I'm also trying to be aware of how to help the diagonals and the S-curve leading her eye to this area. Eventually I find the right color to do to light at first. Eventually I'll find the right color. find the right tone of the ground, it looks like I'm here uh, harmonizing, like a holistic approach to the whole painting. Finding all the areas in the painting that have this color and, you know, harmonizing, which harmonizes the painting, brings it back together. The hillsides, the lightest parts on the hills, and the paths going around. Here I'm painting slow, slow speed, that's the actual speed. I don't paint. I'm going to speed it up now, but that's, that's essentially the speed at which I paint, not 
willy-nilly like you see in most of his painting. I'd like to pick up where we left off last week in the discussion of the book by Elizabeth Gilbert called Big Magic. Big Magic, Creating Liv Creative Living Beyond Fear. We talked about the letter she wrote to fear, setting the boundaries of her creative road trip. You should go back and listen to it. It's a very interesting letter. i get the book. She, she talks about how fear goes along with creativity, and we need to find a way to coexist but not give into it, not to give it any power. Basically, we need to face the fact that we attempt, if we are going to attempt creative things, fear is going to be there. I mean, there's no way around that. Somehow or another, that's the way it works. Last week, we also left off thinking about answering the question this week about why it's worth it. Why it's worth it going on this creative road trip when we know fear is going to be along for the ride. She says it's not always comfortable or easy to carry our fear around with us on our great ambitious road trip. But to her, it's always worth it, she says, because if you can't learn to travel comfortably alongside your fear, then you're never going to go anywhere interesting or do anything interesting. Like we were saying earlier, you're not going to get rid of it. We just need to let it take up the space but not influence our decisions. Because if we can't manage to coexist, we won't go on any creative road trips, so to speak. And it would be a pity, because our lives are short and rare and amazing and miraculous. She says, and I agree, you want to do really interesting things and make really interesting things while you're still here. I know I do. And she says she does. And I propose you do too. It's what we all want, right? You have hidden treasures within you like I do. We have extraordinary treasures and so does everyone around us. Bringing those treasures to light takes work and faith and focus and courage and hours of devotion. And the clock is ticking. The world is spinning. And we simply do not have any more time to think so small. Next week during episode 6, We'll begin discussing chapter two. That chapter is titled Enchantment. We will discover or begin to discover her idea about how ideas are generated and how they come to us and what we choose to do when they come. I hope you'll join me next week for the painting and for the discussion of this fabulous book. This tire gave me fits. I am working devilishly here, fearless, uh, to try and get it right. I realized when I stepped back that it was just wrong. It was respectively wrong. And as I tried to fix it, it got worse because then it, the tone, the, the, the value was wrong. But I didn't give up. I just kept going. Gave it some time. You'll see in the end uh, the finish is still not right here. But uh, that's the thing about painting is that you just have to step back and not just step back and look. Get away from the painting. You can't have fresh eyes on a painting if you don't go away from it. I mean, yes, at the end of every day I go away and I come back. Yes, but during the day I step back and look and then I just go away from the painting. And it. Um, one of the most important things I can tell you about painting to do. Don't give up. Don't keep working on something when it's wrong. I mean, obviously you're going to work it through, but it doesn't come by from just feverishly painting. Like, it looks like I'm feverishly painting, but it's sped up like eight times. So, don't give up, but give it a break. Take some time. Look, look at what you're... Uh, because you, you know you 
you see things differently after a while. You know, the, the blue in the tractor is reflecting the blue in the sky. I'm working on those back, back uh, mountains to try and help the per uh, atmosphere perspective, which is as things are back further away, they are more muted and grayed because of the, the atmosphere between the different planes. So that's uh, what I was doing there. You might have noticed my bracelet in the footage right before I was at the hospital in the emergency room I damaged my left hand finger shutting a door at 7 30 in the morning on Monday but I'm on the mend here we come to the end so here's the diagram of the diagonal lines that I believe backbone of the armature of this design they come down from the mountain around the tree and down the road and to the tractor. This next one shows the the orange line shows how it comes around and around that tire. And I believe that helps to make a successful composition. Here's some close-up footage of the shadows they are not one color got soft edges and the shadows reflect the areas around them enjoyed this episode and thank you so much for tuning in before before I say goodbye we just I wanted to run something by you I had this idea actually other people have this idea and have been telling me for a while now uh, that I should make note cards for my paintings and so I was thinking that I'd make like box sets of like six maybe like seascapes landscapes still lives or maybe like you pick six like I put all my paintings and you select six I make custom boxes. So what do you think of that idea? Let me know in the comments below and I hope you have a magical week. There's a video here. If you haven't watched that one or if you haven't subscribed, you can click on the subscribe or my picture or the, the video to watch a, a previous video if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to tune in. Be creative. Face your fears. Ciao. See you next Saturday.